Hey, quick debrief from yesterday. It's 6.30 and uh, yesterday I started waking up at 4 a.m. to get a workout in before work day starts. It's my second day doing it, second day. I'm a little tired, but also it feels pretty darn good. Like It feels pretty good to actually be able to start the day and then, well, actually start the day having some time for yourself and then going from having time with yourself, that sounded weird, having time for yourself to actually work out and then bouncing into some work, like I get to actually get some work done for Three Timbers or Oleo prior to getting those phone calls where people are asking questions, trying to figure out their job sites, clients that are calling to have any, well, talk about jobs or complain or say it's great, whatever it is. Um, it's just nice to have time before all the mayhem starts. It's nice to have dedicated time. And realistically, at least to this point, what I'm seeing is I wake up at four, no one talks to me until about 7.15. So I have three hours, 15 minutes every morning where I can do my own thing. But I do need to figure out how to get a little more sleep because I have not really been drinking caffeine for several months. And if I have had caffeine, it's been minimal like maybe a, a cup of tea. But as you can tell, 200 milligrams in the Celsius. So yeah, that's that's not great. But uh, yeah, I might need that until I kind of get in a rhythm of going to bed at a reasonable time, or I get in a rhythm of going to bed and waking up at the same time. Because I found that even when I get significantly less sleep, as long as I'm getting the same I'm going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time, I can survive on less sleep. But because I haven't been waking up at four for a while, I've been waking up at like 5.45 or six, gonna have to get used to that for sure. What else yesterday? So more breakdowns from yesterday, I guess. Uh, we have a trailer going in the shop today, dump trailer. We have a axle that's out of alignment. So like one, it's a, it's a double axle trailer. So that means there's two wheels on the side, right? And right now we have an axle that holds that up. And Brad was explaining to me, and he showed me this the other day, that this axle seems to be broken. So instead of being level across and dispersing the weight across both wheels, wheel, wheel, it's like this. So all the weight goes on one tire. And he found that the tire was completely bald the other day. Like the metal was coming out of it. So not super safe and it's making a super weird sound. So that needs to go in. So that's going in today. So that'll be fun to see what that costs. Number two, the sheet of paper that you guys, I don't want you to see. I need to figure this out today. One of our trucks was hit by a cement truck. Luckily no one was hurt. It wasn't a big deal, but a concrete truck sideswiped our 150 that was parked on the side of the road. So I need to get this report out and I need to send it to a body shop so I can get a quote on redoing that truck. It's gonna be kind of expensive because I think the only way they're gonna be able to do it is by replacing the entire bed of the vehicle. Then they'll have to paint it and then we're gonna need to put new logos on it. So pricey, but hopefully it's easy to figure out with their company because I think I think it's a pretty big company, I think. Let me see here. I actually don't even know. I don't know what the company is. And maybe it says on here. Wow, that's actually kind of fascinating. On a police report, when the police officer shows up, it explains exactly what they did, like, every minute. So 1234, RP's vehicle was hit by a cement truck. 1234 in 55 seconds, it's not blocking, no injuries. 1236, RP is in a work vehicle, three timbers, phone number, mine. 1255, CVI to call it 870. I don't know, that must be the concrete truck. I have no idea. 1256, they emailed me. 1256, 51 seconds. They took pictures of damage to the rear passenger. A bumper, 1304, they talked to the insurance company. 1304, they talked to our insurance company and then they talked to the other person's insurance company. 1305, emailed the other company. 1305, got the DOT numbers. 1305, walked through 
the sideswipe vehicle walk through what took place. Yeah, and then they go into like when they were dispatched, when they were en route, when they were at the scene. So yeah, you kind of have a, a breakdown of the whole thing, which is just fun and stuff. Anyways, so I need to do that. But yeah, yesterday, I mean, once again, we have new guys working with us. One of our, our foremen to this point in the lawn care division until we just hired a new one. He originally had planned on sticking with the company and he was actually out with our new foreman yesterday. And I guess our new foreman was kind of pushing to kind of see what else the guy wanted to do, try to learn more about him, see how he could help improve the quality. And I mean, our old foreman actually decided that maybe lawn care isn't for him and he won't be back next year, even though he had already said that he would, which is totally fine because he has to do what's best for him. So uh, good for him making a decision on what he wants to do next year. Hopefully he's super happy doing it. With that being the case, like we have to start hiring now. So I'm back to the well of hiring human beings. And I can tell you that is not the most fun gig in the world. Nothing against the human beings out there, but the people that we seem to interact with that want to join lawn care. I mean, number one, Sam, the guy we found, he's amazing. Absolute gem, so lucky we found him. But the 20 people we interviewed before Sam, man, it was pretty brutal. And I don't know if I even mentioned this in other well, updates, it was like, some guys would be like, oh yeah, it's no big deal. Like, I know you do background checks, but I've done, I'm on crystal meth, but everyone's human. And it's really just like figuring out what your interview process is. And now we kind of have our interview process dialed in even for lawn care. So, and I just like, I set expectations with the guy that I'm interviewing today. It's like, hey, we're gonna do a phone interview. If that goes well, we are gonna do an in-person interview. If that goes well, we are going to do a trial day where you mow like the farm for us or something. So three-step process just to do lawn care. And yeah, that's kinda, kinda different, I think. I could be wrong, but I can't imagine a lot of people are going through um, three phases in their interview process for lawn care. So yeah, we're trying to weed out people. We're also having people come in and do their trial day, the third day in the process on a Saturday. So we see how motivated they are to get to that final step. Last thing is we're not hiring people that don't have jobs. In today's economy, anyone that should have a job or can have a job should have one. Our, our unemployment rate is super low. So it's pretty tough not to have a job right now. And that's just kind of how we assess and assess people that are applying. If you're watching this, I know this is gonna sound sexist, whatever. If you're watching this and you are a female, we would love to have females join our company. I have this vision that, I mean, to this point, we only have guys interview, and I see females out there on lawn care teams, and it just seems as if, I mean, to this point, I've seen them be super detail-oriented. I know this is not universal. I know females can screw up just as much as males, and males can also be detail-oriented. Yeah, don't just, don't go psychotic on me, I don't care. But yeah, I just think an all-female team, I would love to see how they work together. I would love to see what their level of detail is and it'd just be fun to, I, I mean, if we're gonna really focus on human experiments, like it'd be fun to see how crews interact and how they compete, like, I would see efficiency rates, if there's any different between male employees and female employees, age, like do older people perform better than younger people? That doesn't mean people are getting hired based on age or sex or anything like that at all. It'd just be interesting if people are qualified. I and mean, we'd love to have some females reach out if they're interested in a job at Three Timbers. But as you can tell, not the most popular thing in our industry to have a lot of females join. So just know we're open to it. So with that, that'll do it. Today's update. Talk to you later.